uh, I want to show you guys something. Let me go here. So I did record most of the showcases except for one. The only one that I didn't record was the, um, uh, let's see here. I didn't record the, the games fest showcase. I didn't do, you know, keep, keep notes on that, but just so that you guys don't think that I'm capping, um, you know, here goes the X, the, the, the play, the, the Xbox, oh, Jesus Christ, the PlayStation showcase that was held May 24th. Um, all, you know, what's in red is what I thought was, was bad for the showcase. What's green was what I thought was good. Um, I rated everything out of five. Um, my average score for them was like a 7.2 out of 10, if you have, or 3.6, which again goes to a 7.2. <laughs> a lot of you saw me rate most of this live. I mean, then I had to leave abruptly because of something that happened. But um, I, the only parts that I really didn't do was Spider Man Two and the um, the the um, like I didn't get to the Res Resident Evil Down. I didn't do so. I had to do that separately. Um, let's go to the Xbox Showcase. The Xbox showcase, I, I I thought was better, but 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 vaguely, slightly. Um, Fable, to me, is a game that I'm confident will look better than how the showcase showed it. Um, even though the fighting and most of the stuff that we saw was in engine, it was a cinematic. It was just an in engine cinematic. Um, I'm still confident that the game when it comes out is going to show a lot better hold, hold on i'm sorry hold on one second Yeah, even though I, I, I didn't prefer uh, how Fable was shown, I think that the the final game will show a lot better. I just I think I just thought the way it was presented was stupid and cheesy. It was just it was just corny. And but you know, it could have been cheesy and corny in a presentation, and it could have still showed some more badass action, which it didn't. Um, and it didn't show gameplay. And we've we've already been burnt with xbox either in game or cgi and with the final product we've been burnt with it a thousand times we've been burnt with gameplay we'll look at redfall so no no that that didn't reach the expectations that it needed as far as like getting people excited I'm like oh i want to play that no and again, you can say, oh, MM2K, you're capping. Go look, go check the measurements of sales of Xboxes. Like for instance, I know you got a lot of zealots out there saying, oh, France had a 1300%. Don't be fooled by statistics. Let, let me give you a statistic. Say if I sold cool, I, I, I had a lemonade stand, right? And let's just say that my lemonade was staying was doing so poor that I only that everybody around me sold like maybe 10,000 cups of lemonade a month and I only sold one <laughs> you know that's how bad my lemonade stand was doing but let's just say one month something happens I, I get some good advertisement and guess what 
I end up selling a thousand cups of lemonade that, that month. My percentages goes up a thousand. But guess what? The average around me is 10,000. I'm still well behind everybody else. So just because it went up 1300 in France, France probably buys two. There's probably two people with an Xbox <laughs> and maybe, may, may, maybe a thousand decided to put one on pre-order. What, what, what does that even mean? Thir it went up 1300% in France. Look at Amazon here in the States. The only thing that breaks top 50 is a refurbished Series S. That's it. And that's like what, 30, 37th. It's been hovering around 37th, 38th. The Starfield headset and the controller is, is like top 20. But that's universal. It's a collector's item. Right? I don't see the, the game copies of the PC version. I don't see that on sale on Amazon. I don't see that breaking sales. I don't even I don't even see the Xbox version for $50. I mean not $50. I don't even see it in the top 50. Well, there's Game Pass. Well, everybody doesn't have Game Pass. So it's it, it's not like that this caused Xbox sales to go through the roof. They may have got an increase. I'm not doubting that they got an increase, but is the increase that significant? I don't see any signs of it. So that tells me that this didn't garner the interest that Xbox would have needed, even with Starfield. So I'm not pulling this out of my rear end. So people don't want you to dismiss the conversation because it's going to be the biggest game. It could be the biggest game, but that's not been proven yet for one. And for two, if it is the biggest, who cares? What is Xbox offering the people that put all that money out for it in totality? Because people are starting to ask questions. Stop trying to shut their questions up. That's Fable. I, I, I'm confident Fable actually is going to look better at release than it was showed, but I didn't like how it was showed. Oh my God, Avowed. I, Avowed looked horrible. It looked horrible. It was abysmal. Disgusting. I don't even have to say anything else about that. Hellblade 2 looked like a tech demo. Come on, stop showing me all these eerie sounds and, and stuff wavering in the background. Show some gameplay. Path of Goddess looked good. Cyberpunk there look good. Clockwork Revolution as, as a first party game look good. Starfield is 50-50 again because the 30 frames per second thing. And then the last one that I recorded was the Ubisoft 4, which I gave that an eight. I'll show you, well, I'll show you guys what I gave everything. That was the best one out of all of them. I didn't highlight the red and greens yet, but all of it was, nothing was bad there. Only thing that could have been somewhat disappointing was the AC Jade, which I think everybody already knew was mobile. Maybe I didn't know, but I, I was cracking up um, when I saw that it was mobile. I'm not the biggest fan of X Defiant, but it had nothing to do with it showing. It's, it's my personal experience with the most recent versions of it. But to me, Star Wars Outlaws was phenomenal. Hell, um, Prince of Persia Lost Crown was great too. So that's so if you want to see a complete ranking of how I listed the shows, let's get into it. Um, at the bottom, I have PlayStation and the Summer's Games um, opening night at a 7 out of 10. Um, Xbox was a 7.5 out of 10. And Ubisoft Ford, I had an, an, an eight out of 10. And people may say, well, you don't like, you're not giving the Xbox showcase its props. Look, let me, let me tell you something. The Ubisoft showcase stole the show, but they didn't steal the show because it was phenomenal. It was like record breaking. No, like Star Wars Outlaws, uh, 
Prince of Persia lost uh, crown. Everything else was okay. You know, he had a whole bunch of Assassin's Creed stuff. Everything else was all right. They just made sure, I think the smartest thing that they did was they made sure that all the fluff was in the sizzle reel. But it wasn't like phenomenal. And that stole the show. And I was better than Xbox. So if that baseline show outside of Star Wars Outlaws, if that baseline show outside of Outlaws can steal the show, what does that say about anybody else that came up there? Wasn't that great? Stop the cap. Like nothing was like, oh, whoa. And people are like, oh, this was the best Xbox showcase ever. It goes nowhere near touching. What was that Xbox uh, 20, 2008 or 2000? I can't remember which one where they revealed Final Fantasy 13 was coming to Xbox. That was no longer exclusive. Uh, Freaking Gears 2 and all that other stuff that they had there. Stop. Stop. Here goes the game winners. To me, it's my top 10. At no, and I'm going from 10 to 1. Number 10, Ghosts of Eaton, of New Eaton, sorry. Number 9, Path of the Goddess. Number 8 is Remnant 2. Even though this is my most anticipated game, the showcase was, was, was good, but it wasn't better than the other seven. No, number 7, Warhammer Space Marine 2. Uh, number six, Phantom Blade Zero. Number five, Spider Man Two. Number four, Final Fantasy Sixteen. And this is going to be controversial. People are going to say, "No, it should be this. Should be number one. It stole the show." Whatever. I don't shut up. Or people might be upset at how high I have it. Number three is Starfield. Star, there's no getting away, there's no getting around it to say the Starfield showcase was abysmal would be a lie I mean the vastness of it that, that looks fantastic there's a there's something there at the base that has the potential of being great and if it can perform if I can get 1440p 60 ultra settings on, on my PC or higher that could be a great experience. And look, and again, you you got to remember, we're basing this off of showcases. We don't know how any of this is going to be in hand, but the showcase for Starfield was phenomenal. So I, I put that at three. Number two. Number two for me is Alan Wake. Those of you that have been following my content, y'all know that I love I, I, the first game. I love Alan Wake. I love Remedy. But Alan Wake like did something to me when it came out. It was just so innovative and so groundbreaking, just different. And I can't wait to play Alan Wake 2. But the way it, but it, it it was presented like like no other. Like the, the, the pre, everything about that game was just fantastic. And just knowing the magic that Remedy can wield, it's fantastic. But that's not it. The number one game at the showcase was Star Wars Outlaws. Um, I've been trying to tell y'all for a long time that Massive is one of the best developers out there. And here's what you guys have to take into consideration. Massive is not only working on Avatar. They're not only working on um, Division 2. They are working on Division Heartlands, which I can only say I really think people are going to enjoy. And they're working on Star Wars Outlaws. They have active development in four places. 
and they're killing it in all four places. I tried, and then that snowdrop engine is so efficient. It runs on a toaster. I tried to tell you, I tried to warn y'all about Massive, and I knew Massive was something special when I saw Division One. I knew they had what it took when I saw Division One. And my thoughts are, I get it that Starfield may be a bigger game and may be more ambitious, but massive if, if the star if they if they were granted the liberty to make like an open world game and not not a linear title but more of like an open world game that has legs i can easily see myself playing that world more than starfield easily easily And I ain't got to worry about performance because again, that snowdrop engine is a beaut. We ain't got to worry about 60 frames per second there. So again, Starfield may be a little bit more ambitious. May have, it may be counting sandwiches. I, I don't care if in order for you to count sandwiches, if you got to get rid of that and give me 60 frames per second, what, what do you think we want? Let Star Wars Outlaws be openly ambitious it doesn't have to do it at the scope of starfield but we're talking about in the star wars world off that engine and how well that looked like you can't tell me that starfield looked better than outlaws it doesn't it may be more ambitious possibly we don't know but it doesn't look better. So there you have it. That's my top 10. Um, honorable mentions, Hell Divers, the PlayStation VR 2 games. I really thought that those showed well on um, at the PlayStation show. Clockwork Revolution and Avatar. And that is it for today's show.